Today, I'm going to show you how I made this look like this. First, let's talk about functionality. My dashboard is divided in three zones. The first one is my entities, my security state, and my most used scripts. Then we have the information zone. This zone is based on condition cards that will show me the right information right when I need it, like the weather, timers and alarms. You can even put a ChatGPT personalized message using the blueprint on my website. And the last one groups all the areas on my home. This is a simple way to allow me to know what is happening in every area in my home just by looking at it. Now, the key thing here is consistency. This means that you need to be sure that the interface looks and behaves in a similar way. This way, it will be easier to the user to understand how the interface works. For example, if I click on this button and it takes me to a different page, the button next to it should not, for example, turn on a light because the user will expect for it to take it to another page. The main idea behind this design is a way that users normally interact with devices. What I mean is, if you want to turn on a light, your mind will likely go to the page where you can find all the lights or the zone where that light is located. Either way, the interface should give you an option for it to feel natural for the user to use. For this, just go to my website. To achieve this look, I am using the graphite theme and a custom button card. I am also using the mushroom card, but this is optional because you can use the tile card that is already in Home Assistant. To install it, you can use these buttons on my website. After we install this, first, we need to create an automation. This automation will set the default theme every time that Home Assistant puts up. For this, we just need to copy this code and then go to Home Assistant. Here, go to Settings, Automations, click on Create Automation and Create New Automation. And now, just click on the three dots here, then click on Edit in YAML, select everything and then just paste the code. And then just click on Save, give it a name and then click Rename. With this, Home Assistant will set the default theme for all the users. Now, I will show you how to create the first zone. For this, just click on the three dots here, click on Edit Dashboard, click on Start with an Empty Dashboard, and click on Take Control. First, we need to add some button card templates that I created to your dashboard. For this, just go to my website, click on Button Card Templates, and here, just copy the code. Then, go back to Home Assistant, click on the three dots here, and click on Edit Dashboard. Then click on the three dots again and click on Raw Configuration Editor. We need to paste this code before views. These templates are the base that we're going to use to achieve the different styles for our button card. The first one defines the colors that we're going to use to show the entity's state on our dashboard. When the state is on, I selected the color blue. When the state is off, I selected the color ivory. And when the state is neither on or off, I am using the disable text color. So if you want to customize it, you can do it here. The next one is my button card with a bypass template. Here I'm using the color from my previous template and I'm setting the layout to allow me to put two icons in one card. Then is my area template. This is also using the colors from the color template and it's going to allow us to put different icons around our entity to make it easier to understand what is happening in an area just by looking at it. Then just click on save. And to go back, just click on the X here. First, we are going to add a vertical stack. Then we are going to add a grid card. And then we are going to add another grid card. This one is going to have two columns. And here we are going to look for manual. Click on it, and now go to my website. Here, just click on color button card template. Just copy it and paste it here. And we are going to repeat this process for the other four buttons. And that's it. Now we just need to change the entity the icon and the navigation path according to our needs. Then click on the plus icon on the upper grid. Here, look for manual. Then go to my website. And here, just copy the security card template. And paste it. 
and that's it. Here, you just need to update the entities according to your needs. Then, click on the plus icon and look for grid card. Here, we are going to add another 2x2 grid. Now, go back to my website. Here, we are going to copy the color button card template, but the script color button card variant. Just click on it and paste it. The difference from the original one is that this one will allow you to execute up to two scripts. You can configure that here. Then repeat the process three more times. And update the scripts and the icons according to your liking. If you want to remove the second icon of this example, just erase from styled to the end. And that's it. Now, for the second zone, click on this plus icon and we are going to add a vertical stack. Then, look for conditional card. Click on it. And here, first, let's configure the card. For this, just click on card. Here, we're going to look for weather. Click on it. And in weather to show, we are going to select show only current weather. Now, click on conditions. And here, we need to add the conditions that will make the card to be shown. I'm going to look for one of my timers. And in state, I'm going to put idle. Now, I'm going to add a second condition card. For this, just click on the plus icon. Look for conditional card. And here, click on card. And here, we're going to look for timer by card. Add the entity and the motion tag. Then click on conditions. Select your timer. In the state, we are going to put idle, but we are going to change the condition. For this, just click here and select state is not equal to. And that's it. And now if I activate the timer, the weather card will hide and the timer will be shown. You can add any card and conditions to show relevant information in this zone. Now, for the next zone, click on this plus icon. And here we're going to look for grid. This is going to be a four column grid. And now look for man. Then go back to my website and here just click on area button card example. Just copy it and paste it here. Now we need to repeat the same for all the areas in your home. For this, just click on the plus icon. Then we need to update the configuration according to our system. First, we need to update the icon. Then update the entity. I use the light of each area as the main entity. The default tab action will take me to each area page. And for the hold action, I created a script for each area. That allows me to turn off all the relevant devices without having to enter to the page and select them manually. Then we need to update the custom fields. You can use all of them or just the ones that you want. For example, let's say that I don't have a window on my entrance area. For this, just look for the middle left and you can erase it. This is the most difficult part because you need to edit some code. But I hope I added the most common examples for you to just copy and paste it according to your needs. For example, let's say that I want to show the state of the door. For this, I need to change the input boolean here for my door sensor. If I want to invert the condition, I just need to change one of these equal for an exclamation point. Or you can just change the state that you're going to verify here. And if you want to change the icon, you just need to update it here. And that's it. But what if you want to show some text like I'm doing here? For this, just use the top right example. And here, you just need to update the first sensor here and the second one here. And that's it. 
Another option that I have is the ability to show the time since the last movement was detected. To get this, first we need to create a template sensor. For this, just go to my website and here just click on movement minutes ago sensor template. Just copy it. Now go back to Home Assistant, click on File Editor. And here we are going to paste the code at the end. Here first, change the name of the sensor. Then change the friendly name. And then update your motion sensor here. Then just click on save. And now restart Home Assistant. For this, just go to Developer Tools, click on Restart, Restart, and Restart. After it's finished, go back to your dashboard, and now look for what on left. Here, you just need to update your motion sensor here, and the sensor that we just created here. And that's it. If this detect movement, it will show you a motion icon. And if not, it will show you the time since the last movement was detected. Pretty great, huh? And another option that I have is the bottom right. In this section, I put a bypass entity that allows me to deactivate all the automations in an area. That way, if I need a special setting, I can just activate it and change everything to my liking. If you want some blueprints for automate using this, check out my 5 potential blueprint video. And that's it. You can adapt this to show the relevant states of the devices that you have in different areas. And then just click on save. Now we need to create the dedicated pages for every device type and area that you have. For this, just click on the plus icon, select an icon, then select an URL. And since this is a sub view, we are going to select sub view. Then just click on save. Now click on add a card. And here we are going to look for vertical stack. And we are going to add three type cards. Uncheck render cards as squares and then update the entities. The first one is going to be my light sensor. Then click appearance. And here we are going to select color yellow. Now, the next cell card is going to be the temperature sensor. And then go to appearance and select color blue. And the last one is going to be for the humidity sensor. And in color, I'm going to select red. And that's it. Now we need to add a title separator. For this, just click on the plus icon, look for manual. Then go to my website and here just look for title markdown card, just copy it and paste it. First we are going to group all the lights. Then click on the plus icon and we are going to look for grid. Now the first card is going to be a mushroom light card. For this just look for mushroom and click on light card. Here I'm going to select my group bedroom lights. Then I'm going to check fill container and I'm going to activate the brightness control. If you don't want to use a motion card, you can use a tile card. Here just click on features, click on add a feature and select light brightness. The functionality is the same, but I prefer how the motion card looks. Now, the next card is going to be a grid card. For this, just click on the plus icon, look for grid, and this is going to be a 2x2 two two grid. Now, look for manual. Now, go back to my website, and here just click on color button card, and we are going to copy like color button card, and just paste it. And we're going to do the same for all the individual lights we have. Here, we just need to update the entity and the icon.
Here, if you want the icon to show the light color, we can leave color auto, or if you want to show the default colors, you can change this for template color. And now the next one, we are going to add a vertical stack. For this, just click on this plus icon, look for vertical, and here look for manual. Then go back to my website, and we are going to copy vertical color button card. And just paste it, and then add another one. And that's it. Now you just need to update the icon, the entity, and the tab action. I like to use one for my bypass. Here I'm going to change this for toggle and the entity is going to be my bypass. And that's it. I use the other one to activate the ambient mode when I'm going to watch a movie. And now we need to do the same but for the switches. And that's it. Now just click on save. And go back to your home. Click on edit. Click on the third zone. Then go to your bedroom area. And here we need to update the navigation path. And then click on save. Now if I click it, it will take me to my bedroom page. And that's it. If you want the icon to not show here, just click on edit. Then click on visibility and uncheck all your users and then click on save now click done and if you click here you will return to your main page and if i click it again it will take me to my bedroom page you can repeat this for all your areas and for all your device type page here i just want to show you one last template for this click on edit this is the bypass template for this just click on the plus icon then look for manual and now just go to my website Click on bypass button card example, just copy it and paste it here. Here we just need to update the main entity, then update the bypass entity. And that's it. This template is similar to the area one, but only to show the bypass along with the main entity in the same button card. And if you click and hold, it will activate the bypass so you can control the entity manually. And that's it. Now I just click on save. If you have any doubts, please leave me a comment down below and I will try to add more examples over time to my website. So check it out. And if you like my work, please consider supporting me on Coffee using the link in the description or the button on my website. Either way, I will be eternally thankful. Wow. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!